Welcome everyone to our conversation today around the film Samaritan. My name is Ben Lyons. I'm joined now by the producer, the star, the man himself, Mr. Sylvester Stallone. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to chat about the film. Congratulations on the project. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's actually still exciting to be here. <laughs> Well, I'm always I'm always intrigued by your projects because, like I said to you, there's always something else going on and a reason why you say yes. And I'd be curious with this one, where the beginning conversations were around the idea for Samaritan and what was it about this universe that intrigued you? Well, it's it's almost very reflective of what's going on. Uh, quite often, it, it, people go, oh, you know what, we're basically good people. We can take care of ourselves and let's be on the honor system. And quite often it, it backfires. And then you go, well, how do we get, uh, I mean, how, how do we get rid of all this violence and this and that and fear? And then, well, in the movies, it's always this mythic character. But in the end, like, and I say to the people, you have to take care of yourself. That's what it's all about. So it's kind of a cautionary tale that when quite often you get rid of like your hero and then maybe you need the hero back sometimes because uh, you're just not ready to take on the responsibility. But in this particular case, he, he had an issue that is so personal that he couldn't face the facts. And that's why he disappeared. And he thought, okay, why don't I just assume what people consider the most anonymous job in the world, a garbage man. Like, no one pays any attention to these people. Yet, when you think about them, without them, we're in big trouble. So there's all these metaphors in there. You've had, you know, some odd jobs in your career before being an actor and a filmmaker. I would imagine yeah. from a character like this, you're able to tap into some of those emotions that you had way back when, when you were just starting out in your career. You're not kidding. You know, you, you, there is something about on the ground, boots on the ground experience. I have been everything from a doorman to like a, a bartender to cutting fish heads to working in lion's cages to uh, a movie usher where you have, you're the third one who wears the same tuxedo. So you have two other guys BO and people are blaming it on you. I mean, you just, I understand how the whole process works. And we, you know, you gotta be a little humble and. Eat, 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 you know, eat a little humble pie to get through it all. But you learn, you you really learn. And I think it just adds to the human experience. And so I think, like, for example, I enjoy acting now more than when I was 30, 35. Because you think you know everything. You know nothing. I think the soft spot in a man's head doesn't get hard to like about 41. You just, you're still learning. You think you got it under control. Not quite. What do you learn as an actor when you go toe to toe with, at the time, a 13 year old who more than holds his own with you in this? And of course, I'm talking about Juana Walton. Well, you know, you understand that you lose as you get older, you become cynical and ah, the hell with it. And that's why you get the cranky old man syndrome. And then you look at youth. They go, God, youth must be served. There's something, uh, there's something so invigorating and infectious about this kid who's full of life and he just wants to explode and he wants you to help him, you know, educate him, take him on this journey. So in a sense, he's winding the clock back for me. I was willing to go off into that sunset, bitter, crumble away, just become dust. He goes, no, come back. We need you, you fool. Come back. And that, so that's where I think it's important. <laughs> I think when you see older people hanging out with younger people, it's vital because they both become so symbiotic. You grab their wisdom and they grab your energy. And it's very important, I think. You're able to, to have some really special scenes with him, some intimate moments in this world of superheroes and explosions and, and all the action sequences. What were those days like on set, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with such a young actor in that real intimate way? Well, I try to intimidate him, scare him, and make him forget his lines so he doesn't upstage me, <laughs> I think. But no, truthfully... Um, you, you try to relax because I, I understand I am a lot older, a lot larger, like this and that. So I remember the first time I walked on, I said, there's Robert Mitchell. We go, uh-oh, you know, that or John Wayne, it throws you off your game. You think you're ready, but you're not. So I put myself in their position and I, I kept it light, like a child. 
I would joke, I did things, humor. So he was completely relaxed. And actually, he started doing, he's, he's kind of a wise guy, this guy, so in a good way. And his father was there. So we had this very comedic kind of light, one up some trash talking kind of thing. So when the camera rolls, he's right there. It isn't like, oh, here's Mr. Stallone. I must not speak too loudly. And then what is it between the actual characters on screen, between Joe and Sam, you think that really draws them together? I, I, I hate the fact that he's making me face reality quite often. I think one of the main assets people have is a fading memory. You go, oh, thank God. Every day I try to forget something new because they don't want to remember. It's bad times. It's mistakes. It's this and that. And this kid is dragging me back into my memories. He's making me face who I was. I don't want to go there. I left it behind. No, no, no. Nothing that ever goes away, pal. Come back to who you really were. So he, he's kind of like, stop. You are this older superhero. Yeah, you may be a little gray and long in the tooth, but you're not a garbage man. You don't fix the radios. You come to the rescue. Well, you came to the rescue from one of the uh, the other actors in this film. Uh, he got a phone call from you saying that you got the part. Uh, I had a chance to talk to him earlier. Oh. Pilu, who's in the movie, said when you called, you said, congrats, you got the movie. Now hit the gym. Uh, hit the gym <laughs> became the, the, the motivation for him, and, and he appreciated yeah. it. So, you know, like, like oftentimes actors, Sly, when they, when they play a villain, they say it's not the bad guy. He's just misunderstood. What was it about his performance on set that you enjoyed getting to work with him? And then when you see the finished product. You know, play, the key to the good guy is the bad guy. It really is. Good is pretty simple to play. Bad is complex because you either do it so badly, you're like tw uh, twisting the mustache that the audience goes, oh, come on, he's no threat. Like, for example, Mr. T or Drago. They just radiate like, oh, shit, I don't want to be around this. Well, it's the same thing with him. When I saw him in Game of Thrones, there's something in the eyes. Go, He's special. There's something going on there that is truly frightening but intelligent. That's really scary. It's one thing to be chased by a dumb bad guy. To be chased by a smart bad guy, you got, you got an issue. So it just, it, it's just there. Yeah, you can't hide it. It, it radiates a, that he has that combination because he actually is a very good, gentle soul, a great actor. But he also has a dark side, obviously, because you can't fake it. I said, let's face it, you're a twisted sister. And you got it. And admit it, you're a little weird, all right? Which is good. You, uh, you know, you talk a lot about the process and how to be patient in life and, and in film, I feel like. And, and the idea of training for a movie, you can't do it all at once. It's got to be no. a process and, and something you build towards. Uh, there's some intense action sequences for you in this project. Uh, walk me through the training process and some of the sequences on set. Which ones you really enjoyed? Well, I think you ha uh, there is a, a point where, okay, you can't do 29-year-old Rambo kind of a thing because you ha also have to honor who you are, your age. That's, point, that's the part of it that... You're not who you were, but you're still there. Actually, there's a line in there where, you know, you start to fall apart when you stop caring about everything, meaning life, yourself, everything. So I thought that this guy, his strength would be in his resolve, and he still has great physical power as opposed to speed. And he, He's not jumping through the air. He's not that kind of guy. He's like a very, very, very powerful individual that – is still sort of in the world of reality a little bit. He can't fly. He can't see through you know walls or whatever. Fire doesn't come out of his mouth. He's just a unique sort of superhero. He's almost like a modern day Hercules. You know, he's that kind of a mythic hero. And I think those are ones that you can identify with. You say, oh, he can die. He, I mean, he he gets hit enough, he's gone. You know, their challenges. So, yeah, there are challenges in a project like this, I would imagine, in that you're introducing the audience to this world, what the rules are, what the guidelines. Like right. you said, this character you play has kind of Herculean strength. Um, but right. there isn't the 
preconceived notion of I grew up on this comic or I remember watching the cartoon. Right, right, it's right. Different uh, approach for the audience. So I would imagine for you as a filmmaker, it's something appealing about this is creating a a superhero type of world that is entirely new. Yes, there is. There has been a tremendous accomplishment by certain directors and certain companies in Marvel and DC that have really push the universe to the max. I mean, with everything that you could possibly imagine has been created. I always feel there's nothing quite as relatable as almost getting hit by a car or walking down a dark alley and you, what was that? There's a shadow coming behind you. That's very relatable. So what I'm trying to say in my awkward way is that we try to make the events and the danger plausible in a sense and identifiable that that could happen to you it's something that's very tangible it's not from another universe it's right here in the streets so keep your guard up that's it it's just it, it could happen to you it's like i it's like what i tell my daughters all the time you know and life today is one strike baseball there is no three strikes it's like you got to be looking all the time and that's what, what I try to add to this, that there's a sense of impending danger, but it's real. It's not way over the top, just a little over the top, a little bit. No, it's a high concept world. It's big ideas, but it's grounded in truth and reality and real danger. Yeah. And the reason why I think it works in the film like this in large part is a performance um, of Dasha Polanco, who plays, you know, the young boy's mother. And you guys have some great scenes she's together. Out great. Fan of hers on Orange is the New Black. Uh, talk to me. I about love her. her. No, uh, she's great. She's great. I love to work with her. And she she brings it. I mean, you know, off camera, she's very funny and very exuberant. And then on camera, she has to be the mama. So you realize this is an actress. This is a performance. Because she has to dial that down. And then perform it in a different way and then when the camera cuts hey it's whatever right, so right. It, th again that's that's what makes actors unique is they're a little nuts <laughs> uh, let's it, go. It, but in a good way this question from justin barrasso at sports illustrated who asks samaritan is a story about the fighting spirit as a longtime fan of pro wrestling dating back to the bruno san martino days yeah for Jeff, sure how did that world shape your storytelling and specifically in Samaritan? Well, I love wrestling. I love the, again, mythic quality. People go, oh, it's not real. I said, really? Gravity is real. Jumping off a top rope at 300 pounds landing on you is real. And uh, I feel the same way about quite often action films have been kind of like submerged in a dismissive sort of genre, like, ah, it's an action film. All right, all I know is I've had maybe 31 operations due to action films, so I consider it very real. You know, I understand what goes into it. So the idea, and like the Bruno San Martino, these are the people that forged my personalities and my, my outlook on life. Bruno, I, all those guys, Gorgeous George, uh, Steve Reeves, all of them, Rocky Marciano, that especially Rocky Marciano. So I hope that sort of answers it, maybe sort of. No, no, there's a there's a, obviously a, a passion for that world, and as it's oh, big time. I still, I mean, I made my daughters watch wrestling. I said it's not about it's watch the story. It's these morality plays that has nothing to do with. Uh, who's scoring the touchdown? It's like, are you swept up in the drama? But that's what it's about. It's entertainment. It's not meant to be, uh, okay, the score is now 14 to three. It's not that, that's not what it's about. I just love doing a, a conversation with you about this film and someone throws in a Bruno San Martino reference. That just made the wrestling fan of me. Uh, let's go to uh, Kelvin Chave, who has a question. Uh, what made you take a chance on a young director like Julius Avery? Well, I've directed a few things myself, and it's kind of like having your spleen pulled out through your nose with a tractor. It's not fun. It's hard work. People, oh, it's so glamorous. 
It's not glamorous. It's brutal. It takes a toll on your private life. Forget about sleeping. You answer 8,000 questions a day. It's tough. And then you have post-production. So you have no life. It really. And I know there's a certain point where you're not, like you, you know, you've lost a little speed. And young guys, they're hungry. They're drooling. They live for this stuff. This is their moment. The testosterone is pouring out of their ears. And they're going to they're gonna stay up late at night and deliver. So that's why I think uh, it's, it's, if you're going to do that kind of film, you need that kind of energy. I've, I've done it the other way, and it has not worked out very well. This question, from say Josh, that. <laughs> this question from Josh Wilding from Comic Book Movie, who asks, what would you say to superhero fans about what they can expect from Samaritan? There's a certain type of fan who obviously gravitates towards this genre, if you will. And, and how do you think mm. this would because this guy, this sort of superhero fan is not, he, again, much more pedestrian. You could be standing next to him or riding next to him on an L or a bus and not even know you're sitting next to some fella here that can literally lift the bus up. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of simplicity to it, and it's a simmering boil. And that eventually erupts as opposed to triumphant music and thing and special effects and thunder and guys hitting the ground with their fist, kind of a seismic wave. So you can expect a hero that is very regular and does irregular things. That's that's what it is. Something that is, oh, wow. He's kind of, it's not like if Rocky was a superhero. It's something that is identifiable and street like it's not set in some super fantastic universe it's set among brick and concrete and identifiable situations that we all the neighborhoods we live in and that's what i liked about it this next question mr stallone is from alessandro conti who asks one of the themes of the film is the possibility of having a second chance what were the second chances that were important in your life well Redemption is everything. Uh, unfortunately, we only learn through stupid mistakes. Your parents tell you, they go, don't do that. Fire is hot. You know, maybe to you, but, and of course you get burned. And then we spend the second half of our life trying to like make up for sometimes stupid decisions. Redemption. It's one of my favorite favorite topics matter of fact almost everything i read is dripping with a sense of redemption this again is a second chance to right or wrong now there's a twist in samaritan that i don't think anyone's going to see coming but it, it again it's for him to eventually own who he is and say okay i made mistakes but I won't again. Now I know and I'm going to do the right thing, which I think is the ultimate fantasy. I mean, good God. Everyone says, if I knew then, what I know, you know, if I know now what I knew then, that's it. So I really capitalize on that kind of thing uh, whenever I can of this unrequited this or unachievable that, because that's a hunger. It's like loneliness. Everyone. His biggest fear on the planet is being alone, living alone, and maybe even going away, dying alone. There is no worse horror than the pre that premise. So that's what Rocky Six was about, with Rocky and his whole thing. So when the producer, nobody wants to do it, they go, ah, oh, it's a stupid idea. They go, no, no. For people that are actually facing that, which is the majority of the earth, it's identifiable. It's grief. We deal with it. And so I don't want to get morbid, but you try to hit subjects that are relatable. That, ah, I, I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be lonely. I know what it's like to have a heart broken. If otherwise, if the, if your hero doesn't give a damn, I don't give a damn about him. And that's so you need some sort of relatability, which means they're, they're vulnerable. They're fragile at times. 
and it's very relatable what this young character is going through and seeing for a lot of people, yeah. right? seeing your mom struggle, knowing that you want to do the right thing, but the wrong things presented right in front of you, which makes it hard mm-hmm. to experience is that every young person faces on some scales throughout their life. And, and we have another question from a journalist here, Spencer Legacy, who asks, what's it like to work with Javon Wana Walton and see the next generation of actors coming forward? Okay. I'd like to knock this kid's teeth out, tell you the truth. No, I'm kidding. I love him. He he is he's wonderful. I first met his father it was during Creed Two, and I said, Who is this guy? I mean, he's really tough. And then as fate would have it, that's the father of Javon. And Javon's an amazing athlete. He's like world class fighter, athlete. But more importantly, he's very funny. He has humor. And he's also kind of he gets the joke of how to work sarcasm and and humor. And that's a very, very, very rare combination. It wasn't as though you have some sulking kid. Hey, wake up. Are you okay? Oh, my bird died. No, it's, that's not it. He comes happy. He comes exuberant. So it just brought me up, too. It's that kind of a thing. I couldn't wait to sit there and start, you know, trash talking each other every morning. Well, it's really cool to see how much energy you take from young people. You provide this wisdom, this experience from having lived every you know life you could possibly imagine right. in this timeline. But the <laughs> yeah. fact that you're able to now get some energy back from from young actors or just young people. Uh, you mentioned your daughters a few times. That's obviously something yeah. that really brought you to this role I, and this project because you're going toe to toe with this kid throughout most of the movie. Yeah, I'm like an emotional vampire. I'm just going to take what I can. <laughs> Uh, this uh, this next question is from uh, Francisco uh, Francesco Cangiano from Cine Express, who asks, one of the things I most enjoyed and appreciated about the film is the themes that it explores, like we said, Mr. Stallone, underneath the surface, right? Something a little deeper. Mainly the whole world, the whole good versus evil through line. Was this tug of war between these two ideas one of the aspects that attracted you to the movie? And what was your approach when exploring this through your character and your performance, the tug of good and evil? The tug of good and evil is something that is just eternal because it is the tug within us. We have, I don't want to give anything away, but we are so duplicitous. We can be the highest of angels and the lowest of devils, and it's all in the same body if pushed in a certain direction. It's like, how were you raised? What are your ethics? What is your what sets you off and what breaks your heart and it's this constant struggle i look at this i looked at him as god this is the future but i don't know if i want to belong to the future and this kid just like pulling me back and say stop being a coward be who you are save me be my father is what he's saying and i have nothing as i said before he's a lonely old man who is going into obscurity he finds broken objects in the trash which is symbolic of him he's trying to fix he can fix everything except himself along comes the young man and he fixes me unbeknownst to me but he just pulls me along because i i realize he's so vulnerable i go my god i gotta do something this kid needs a father and he's adopted me and I have no choice. And then you see the hero aspect come out. Whereas before I didn't care about anybody. We've got, uh, we've got time for a few more here. This one is from Ravi from PTI India. What keeps you going, Mr. Stallone and wanting to take on movies with loads of action, especially with Samaritan and Expendables? You know, they can do this stuff with CGI now, but you've got real things blowing up on set, like real action, like you still are going Ooh. for it. What is it that keeps you going and wanting to continue to push yourself as an action star? I don't know, but I wish I would get over it. <laughs> there is, I think, when I started, there was no real what I call action film. There were action beats, there were car chases, there was this and that, there'd be a fight. But I thought, wow, this is a genre that's really fascinating where you, a real action film, you could turn the sound off and know what the story is just through physical movement. So when I did Rambo, I literally said how the first blood, 
turn the sound off, people will know what the story is. That's when I realized how important this genre could be. And it was, and, and it's modern mythology. We need these stories cathartically from Joseph Campbell's, you know, man of a thousand masks, myths and all that stuff. Mask, I mean, every society needs these figures. It's almost as though, oh, they're gods. They're modern day godlike creatures. We see this from the Iliad and the Odyssey and Homer to present day Marvel. There's no difference. It's the same thing, except being presented through some of the CGI and the other ones on the written word. So I'm fascinated with the idea of being able to tell stories. The fact that the question comes from India, that it actually is understood by a, a, a culture, a different complete culture, but they completely get it because we're hitting on the same sort of emotions that every human being on the planet shares which is that fear, the loneliness, the heroism, the youth must be served, you know, the father-like figure, all that stuff. I try to constantly, whenever I see an opening, I stick it in there. It's corny. People, uh, it's kind of saccharine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Call me a honey bear. I am completely saccharine. That's, that's how I roll. No, and it's human connection. And it's, a, it's an honor. Oh, always. To be able Always. to connect with you and talk to you about this. No, project. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Career and life. And, and yeah, congratulations on this one. The film is Samaritan. It's available exclusively on video August 26th. The great Sylvester Stallone. Thank you for spending some time. My pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.